from 1975 to 2020, there, were, there was actually no bloodshed on the border at all. Eventually, there was a clash. Uh, uh, quite a few soldiers died. Uh, and what that has done is it has really vitiated the relationship. We ended up with a number of points where uh, there is a very close-up deployment uh, of troops, which is uh, fundamentally dangerous. Yeah. The fact is, uh, as two countries uh, who are really proximate neighbors, who are uh, the two oldest civilizations of the world, who have survived as nation states, who are in a way exceptional nation states because they are civilizational ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think there are realities that need to be uh, recognized, and uh, I, I, you know, uh, perhaps each one of us has some tradition of how we look at the world. But traditions, at the end of the day, also have to uh, take into account contemporary realities. I mean, I am today the third, uh, the fifth largest economy. I am the largest in terms of population. Uh, the impact that India would make. Uh, I'm the stronger, fastest growing large economy of the world today. Mm. So those are realities that have to be factored in, in anybody's calculation, not just in China's. Do you believe that China will accept, can accept India as a peer in its Sinocentric view of the world? Well, let me start with the first part of it, mm. uh, which is uh, uh, what's happening at the border. Uh, as you know, we, we had uh, a border dispute pretty much uh, from the time when uh, they had the revolution and we got our independence. Uh, it took about a decade for this to really come out. You know, initially they were a bit evasive about it. Uh, the, their maps uh, depicted the border uh, in terms of their claims. Uh, and they avoided, uh, you know, engagement in the initial years. But uh, by, by the second half of the 1950s, it was very clear to us that we had a very serious issue on our hands. Uh, and uh, then in 1962, we had a, a border conflict, mm -hmm. uh, and they got the better of it. Uh, now, from 1962, uh, in fact, in 19... Uh, uh, from uh, before the conflict, we had withdrawn our ambassador, uh, and uh, it was only 1976 that we resumed ambassadorial relations. Uh, and uh, in the, uh, it took another decade really for a prime minister of India uh, to go to China and and sit down and discuss the relationship with them. Uh, so uh, in the 1990s, uh, both countries made an effort uh, to discuss the border, but stabilize the border while it was under discussion. Uh, and the arrangements we arrived at in the early 90s, uh, in 93 and 96 specifically, uh, lasted uh, really uh, till 2020, mm. uh, that uh, there were very specific arrangements about not bringing a uh, large number of troops to the border, and then there were further agreements about what happens when patrols uh, interact with each other. So. Uh, so from 1975 to 2020, there, were, there was actually no bloodshed on the border at all. Uh, but uh, then we saw in 2020, for whatever reason, the Chinese uh, uh, did, you know, did not uh, uh, continue to uh, adhere to the agreement, and uh, we had a, a big uh, a movement of troops uh, to the line of actual control, and. Uh, uh, eventually there was a clash, uh, uh, quite a few soldiers died. Uh, and what that has done is it has really vitiated the relationship. You know, it has vitiated the relationship, one, in terms of bringing back memories of our conflict and of uh, sharp differences. But it has also raised questions about uh, a neighbor, when you say, you know, when you have an agreement, uh, you know, the. Uh, it's important that uh, agreements are uh, uh, kept to. And when that doesn't happen, uh, that too has uh, consequences in terms of credibility and, mm. and trust. From breaking news, detailed analysis, in-depth interviews and explainers, follow The Times of India. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like our videos and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest.